So, good morning. We're here at uh, Web Summit in Lisbon, and uh, I'm joined here by Karsten and Morley, and we are talking visibility. So, first of all, what do we mean by visibility? Karsten? So, first, uh, great to be here. Super exciting environments, and especially talking uh, visibility. This, uh, this got to be the place. <laughs> so, visibility, I think we can uh, talk about that in, in different, uh, or through different lenses, but I think it's about enabling full transparency for our customers along the supply chain. Mm. So, it's about cargo whereabouts, it's about uh, you know, the administrative tasks to ensure that there's full transparency and visibility for all customers at any step of the way. Yeah. And when we've been thinking about visibility, I mean, it's obviously one of the biggest nuts to crack in our industry. But what is the big challenge morally in terms of bringing visibility to an end-to-end -end supply chain? Yeah, I mean, if you think about visibility, it's one of the fundamental things that anybody would want, right? So you'd say, where's my cargo today? You know, where is it this hour? And, and, it's, and it's actually a very hard nut to crack. And uh, because people, the customers want visibility across their supply chain. They don't want just Maersk visibility or a vendor visibility. They want visibility for everything, whether they do uh, business in India or in China or in Shanghai. Like they, they want that visibility. But it's, it's uh, our supply chain is so fragmented, and it, there's so many intermediaries, uh, and a lot of it is you know document and. Uh, heavy documentation that's manual, and, and so it's very hard to digitize and get that visibility back to our customers. Uh, and so they, they can't really answer the fundamental question of where's my cargo today? Uh, and as you say, it's not just cargo. No, it is not, uh, and, and I'll just, firstly I'll build on, uh, on Morley's point here because I think it's super important to talk about this fragmentation because mm -hmm. there's nothing that really aggregates the data in a you know single platform or, or say single channel for our customers, mm. so that means that we are sort of forcing customers to actually gravitate towards you know different channels. If they want to get inland visibility, if they want to get ocean, they have to go to the ocean carriers. So we need that ecosystem that actually aggregates data, normalizes data, and presents data back in the channels where the customers they are. So that is is definitely one of the big nuts uh, to crack as well. And obviously, data, data, data. What can the customers do if they can get access to this data and actually work with it? The first of all, the fundamentals, they need the data, right? That's, that's really the, the fundamentals of getting visibility. Uh, but, but, you know, the, the, once we crack that nut, the customers are actually wanting visibility for a few outcomes. Uh, and one of the outcomes is they want more predictability in their, in their mm -hmm. supply chain. Given the pandemic that's happened, you know, they want to actually hold more inventory just to build rel reliance, resilience in their supply chain. And so that just, means that they need more actionable insights and they want, so the visibility towards the, towards what end? Towards mm -hmm. the end of, you know, better res resilience in their supply chain, better inventory, making sure stock is not out, you know, things are not out of stock in their warehouses, in their, on their stores. So that's why they want to actually get out of it. So they start with visibility, but actually they want more insights and more predictability in their supply chain. And I think that's also a little bit back to the question you actually asked me before around, you know, what else yeah. around just the uh, cargo level or SKU level visibility. This is also about understanding what is the status of my shipment. You know, where are my documents? What, are, what do I need to do best mm. uh, or next to your point around actionability? So it's not just about the cargo. It's also about, you yeah. know, what actually follows the cargo in terms of documents and, and other processes. And I don't think we are good enough and sharp enough in actually providing that as the industry incumbents, but getting there. So obviously to get there, it's going to take a lot of technological advancement. So what is the tech that we're looking at to improve visibility? Morgan? Yeah, there's, there's plenty of them, right? So if we start with the f just the basic data layer, right? Which is, you know, you, you have to integrate with you know, multitudes of these fragmented vendors and, and, and third party carriers across the board, right? And, and it's not just Maersk, it's everybody under the sun. So there's like a huge data element and getting the data to a place where we are confident uh, Building algorithms so that we, we we know where the where the shipment is, where the SKU is, uh, and building some sort of uh, prioritization of what we actually want to surface to our customers. Mm. So it starts with the big the bit big data layer, which is you know you got technologies such as big data, you know AI, ML, predictability uh, that go into go into building this data layer. But it's a lot more on top of it, right? So once you have the data layer, then you then you actually have to uh, make sure. Uh, uh, there is you know, predictability and forecast uh, where the where the uh, you know next exception will happen, mm. uh, and so building uh, predict you know I talked about predictability, but really where is the demand coming from? Where is the supply chain? Where is it going to break? And then building 
uh, intelligence on top of that. That's that's kind of the some of the technologies. But I'm sure like a Karsten has a lot more on the integration side, which is a uh, yeah. And and, yeah. and this sort of speaks a little bit to you know where we make this available to our customers because yeah. we have also been I think in the past at least quite insistent on pulling them into our flow, mm. and we want to basically show up with relevant visibility data in the channels where the yep. customers are when it's relevant for them. Yeah. So we don't want to have them sitting and navigating around Merce.com and pressing, uh, you know, refresh and refresh to figure out where the container is. We want to provide, you know, actionable insights yep. so they can actually go and do something now with that data. So we're sort of trying to basically drive the process very, very differently, becoming more proactive and as uh, Morley said, drive actionable insights so they can actually do something with the data. And that means that we, we will be in APIs if customers want integration. We want to be in EDI if they want different types of integration. Mm -hmm. If mobile is the preferred channel for customers, we want to show up the relevant point in time with the relevant data yeah. to make that actionable as well. So an omni-channel engagement is also what we're looking at here. Has this been something as well, when we think about customer outcomes, have we seen an increase demand or pressure from our customers to provide more visibility? Clearly. And that is uh, maybe not so much on, say, the conventional ocean piece and so on, but uh, you mentioned SKU level, right? We need to be able to talk about what happens inside the container. We need to show the whereabouts of the individual SKUs in the container. Mm. There's a big demand for that as supply chains have become a little bit more complex, to say the least. Um, there's something around the modalities where we are not good today, right? So what do we do about air freight visibility? What do we do on land-based and so on? Mm. So stitching all of that up is becoming a significant and resounding demand for a number of our supply chain customers. Yeah, so we are, we are pushing hard in that direction. Mm -hmm. Adding on to what Karsten is saying, the number one ask from our customers is visibility. Like everything else comes number two, but number one is visibility. This is kind of the, like, like we said, it's the, the table stakes to just get it, get the visibility of where their, where their stuff is. Uh, but also it's a very hard nut to crack. There's a lot of startups in this place. Maersk is trying to uh, yep. build some, but it's, it's a lot of interest in this. But we've got to understand like there are three pillars in it, right? So first of all, you need to, you, you need the, entire supply chain to digitize, and that's going to take multiple years, right? Yeah. So we have vendors who are on EDI, some of them on Excel sheets running their ports, right? So all of yeah. these needs to, needs to be funneled into a digitization of the supply chain. That's going to take a massive amount of time, but our customers can't wait. So we got to build technologies, like it's scrape, scrape the screens or be creative, fill in data where it's not available, uh, interpolate data from two different streams, knowing and predicting what's in the, in the middle. Uh, myth, uh, adding missing data in there. So there's a lot of things we can we need to do right now while the supply chain digitizes. Uh, yeah. But that also means you know, we, we educate our customers, our vendors on going more API first and not EDI because API is where we, they, we get real time two way transfer yeah. of data and, and so on. Yeah. Um, exactly. And, and uh, building on that, I think it's interesting to see some of the, uh, say the plays we see in the market, you know, trade lens being one of those. Yeah. Uh, we start to see some ecosystem shaping around visibility that actually aggregates, you know, air, ocean, land-based, mm -hmm. and so on. That sort of talks to some of these administrative visibility components as well, such as where's my document. So, so those ecosystems they start to shape, and and we focus a lot on that as well. Yeah. Uh, in Mask, we got Merce.com, which is now becoming one of those ecosystems. And as we bring all this together, so if we crack the nut of visibility uh, and give these customers both the visibility, the predictability that they are looking for, what's next after that? What can they do with this visibility? Right now, it's a lot about you know the actual cargo, yeah. the cargo whereabouts and so on. We need to expand it, and we need to ensure that it's end-to-end -end visibility at what happens inside you know, a container or a carton or something like that. Uh, and I see that uh, sort of shaping up over the next uh, couple of years. I see the uh, additional say, visibility components, documentation, next best action, and so on, mm. becoming maybe the next big thing over the next two to three years. Then it's about how we actually uh, acquiring the data. So geospatial is basically going to be one of the areas that's also going to grow. I think we will see a, 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 say a different omni-channel approach okay. where we will see you know, even our big strategic accounts using multiple channels. They will get API for the basics. For some of their import offices, they will actually use mobile as a much more agile way of actually receiving events, notification, visibility, and so on. So I think we will also see a channel proliferation in terms of visibility. Mm. But at a very low level of detail and instant, those yeah. are two of the main components that we're also going to see shaping up over the next years. Yeah. 
And you say what next? I mean, like there's a huge productivity improvement there as well. If you think about, you know, believe it or not, there are still places where there are fax machines that we send <laughs> shipping instruction that, you know, people stand in a line in a store to collect the document and then show up at the at the at the at the port and collect their, uh, you know, uh, collect their container. Now that's you know all of that is like leads to people spending more time, less productivity, doing could have done something else, and so we are digitizing all of that. Right? And mm -hmm. so once we digitize this, we provide them the visibility. It, it, it huge leads to huge productivity savings, and uh, for that matter, also carbon footprint savings. Right? People yeah. don't have to drive; they don't have to stand. Like all this electronics that that goes into into these stores that don't have to be there. So yeah. that's a huge uh, productivity carbon footprint impact as well. Okay, so lots happening in the space of visibility and lots more news to come in this space. So, I guys, hope you enjoy the rest of the events and uh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Sam. Likewise.